Welcome to our YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the throne of the Almighty God in the lips of a pastor. The blessings await you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Please let us pray. The Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will come before you because of the mighty God. As you look at your word now, you will bless every individual here and every individual across the airwaves in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Welcome, church. Today we shall be looking at leadership cleansing before public ministrations in the series As to the Call of the Almighty God, Part 171. Leadership cleansing before public ministrations. And our text references are from 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 39 to 42. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 39, for as the Lord liveth which saveth Israel, though it be in Jonathan and son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 40, Then said he unto Israel, Be on one side, and I, and Jonathan my son, will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 41, Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. Paul Samuel chapter 14, verse 42. And so said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. If you look at these verses closely, we understood from the previous study that Jonathan had a near success experience. As he told the people who erected the altar of fellowship for reconciliation with the Almighty God, that they should eat the camp of the Philistines from night to morning. And they wanted to hear from the Lord's first. And there was spiritual blackout. There was no ministration. They couldn't hear a word from the Almighty God. And he knew, as a, spirit, as a, as a spiritual man that he was, that there was sin in the camp. There was somebody who has committed sin. They never knew that it was not a, a sin estranged in the law, so to speak. It was an instruction that he gave that no one should test of anything or be honey during the period of fasting. It was instruction as the commander in chief of the armed forces of Israel that he gave. But when he gave that instruction, Jonathan wasn't there. And so his instruction became a commandment. That's why we must take heed. When you have a sincere leader, when you have a sincere minister, when you have a sincere pastor, genuine and is serving the Lord, when he gives or he or she gives an instruction, instruction becomes a commandment of the Almighty God. Now, we'll look at this now. We're looking at taking spiritual care of your household before public ministry to the people. Now, Jonathan was not aware of the instruction that the Father gave. And the father was not aware that Jonathan wasn't aware. And now he gave the instruction, but he didn't know that he did not communicate to the second in command, that who was Jonathan. He didn't know. So it is very, very critical as leaders today, if you have a second in command, you have somebody that's working with you, take care and ensure that the leadership team is fully abreast, is fully knowledgeable of the instruction that you have to give to the people. If you are to instruct the people to do this and to do that, then set leadership by example. Ensure that you, the main leader and the leadership team, will do the same. So that the people will see not just your instruction, they will see by the lifestyles of the leadership team members that they are doing exactly the same thing. Now, it is very critical that you understand this. The Holy Spirit wishes to speak to us in two points. Point number one, negligence of leadership to return to the Almighty God. Point number two, navigation of leadership to return to the Almighty God. Negligence of 
leadership to return to the Almighty God. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 39, for us, the Lord liveth, who saved Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then said he unto unto Israel, be on one, on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemed good unto thee. The people did not answer because they knew that Jonathan was the cause of the issue, the cause of the problem, the cause of the crisis, the cause of the spiritual chaos. They knew, and now you see. Because Jonathan had done exploits for the Lord before then. And so they would not want Jonathan to be killed for his innocent mistakes, so to speak. Now, you see, leadership or every system, every organization, every family is always divided into two. You have the leadership and then the followers. Leadership and then the follower. Let's come to the nuclear family. For every nuclear family, you have the father and the mother. And they stand as the leaders. And then you have the sub-leaders as the elder brothers and the elder sister. And then you have the people, maybe the, the siblings, the junior ones, like that. Or if you want to divide this nuclear family into two, you have the father and the mother as the leaders, and then you have the others as followers. In every organization, in every sector, in every system, there are always leaders and there are always followers. That is, and instructions will always come from the leadership onto the people. But you see, and if there's a negligence in that kind of flow, the flow is that, or the algorithm is that, the instruction will come from the leadership onto the followership. But if the leadership will not do a thorough work, if the leadership will not do a thorough work among themselves, they will discover that they will communicate to, to the people, but there will be lapses. That's what the Lord is speaking up to us today. That as leaders in the church, wherever we are, as leaders and as followers too, we should be mindful of what we tell the people, we should be mindful of what we tell them, whatever information that we give unto the followership, unto the followers, we should be mindful that we, the team members in the leadership, have internalized, have accepted, and they are doing that same instruction they were given to the followers. We shall look at leadership and the rest of the people. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 4, behold, I'm giving him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. God raises up leaders. He raises up commander to the people. Another word for a synonym for leader is a commander. It is God that establishes or writes or that installs leaders. Because you see in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 4, Behold, I've given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. But you see in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, Let them alone. They will blind leaders of the blind, and if they blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Which means we have leaders that are legitimate, we have leaders that are godly, we have leaders that are righteous, we have leaders that the Lord has raised up as a commander to the people. We also have leaders that are blind. If you have leaders that are blind, they will lead the people into the ditch. But our prayer is, wherever we are, in our various families across the world, our mothers, our fathers, our parents will not be blind spiritually to lead us aright. Wherever we are, in any setup or organization, in any country, our presidents, our governors, our district councils and all of those people will not be blind because if they are blinded spiritually, if they are blinded mentally, if they are blinded socially, if they do not have the navigation, if they do not have the way, if they do not have the blueprint, if they do not have the roadmap, if they do not have the inkling, if they do not have the hint to lead the people aright, they will lead, they will lead the people into the dish. That will not be our experience. In every community, in every town, in every city, in every state, in every countryside, in every country, basically, we'll see the people divided into two. We have the leadership, and then we have the followership. That's exactly what King Saul, the commander of the armed forces of Israel, did. Because there was an issue now. And says, okay, fine. I know in my heart, as a family, we are doing a dedicated service unto the Lord. So uh, let me step aside. This family given to the nation. I and Jonathan on one side, the leadership team, and then the people on the other side. So that we will know and we will trace where the problem is at that point. King Saul never knew where the problem was. And I think King Saul never knew that his son, his ally, his two IC, the second in command, was the cause of the problem. That gives us some inkling, and that we'll discuss later. Communication in leadership is what we're discussing now. Communication in leadership. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For which such sacrificing God is, is well pleased. 
Look at that verse again. He didn't put chapter 13, verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. When you do good and you communicate, the Bible says, forget not. For with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. Have you want somebody for the Lord? Communicating with that person and giving the person updates about the recent development, about the things the person needs to know about the word of God, about the ways of God, about the things of God, as we do as discipleship, is communicating. And such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Are you in the leadership team, or the main leader, or the people in the leadership scheme, if they do not have adequate communication among themselves? And that will not them to be unrighteous. Look at that verse again. You put your verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For we saw sacrifices, God is well pleased. Because you see, communication is key. It is key. And you heard about a recent development, the recent update. I need to update and exhort this child of God about this and how to go about that and go about this. And you communicate and you do that sacrifice. The Bible says, God is well pleased. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, for the leaders of these people cause them to err. And they are led of them and destroyed. I read again in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, for the leaders of these people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. If the leaders will not have a, a proper communication, um, mechanism in place if they do not have a proper communication mechanism in place then they might lead the people to the dish and when you fall into the dish it is tantamount to destruction now king saul was not the torch with his second command it was not the torch with jonathan now he told the people do not taste anything during the period of the fast he never asked the people where is my second command he didn't bother to know if he were standing, where is he standing with me now? He never bothered to know. He didn't bother to look at the audience and say, where is Jonathan? He never bothered. He just asked an instruction. And it was the last in that communication. That sacrifice of communication was not done. And God wasn't pleased. You see the roots of the issue now? It's not enough to dish out the instruction. It's enough to communicate adequately. He never asked. If he had asked, if Jonathan then, Jonathan my second command, I want to tell the people now that there's no test of anything during the period of past. As a, a team member of the leadership of, 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 of the leadership, then Jonathan would have been aware. But he took it upon himself and discharged instruction. Never bothered that Jonathan was in the audience. Not only that. Jonathan left the camp. Because he was moved by the spirit of the living God, he left the camp and went and stormed the Philistines' camp and then destroyed the people. And we have taught this before in the study. Yes, of course, he was used by God. Yes, of course, he did the right thing. But when you are doing the right thing, it is important you go to the basic things. You don't say because God has given you a responsibility that is higher than every other person, or you are given a certain task now, and then you begin to get puffed up, and then you have this thing gets into your head, you will not follow the basic rules anymore. You see yourself higher than every other person now because God just spoke to you yesterday, and God is leading you in this direction now. Because if Jonathan had told the father that I'm out there going to do this battle, then the father would have well informed that he wasn't around. Of course, later they knew. That he wasn't there. And there was an issue between this King Saul and his son. The issue between the main leader and the second command. The issue between the, the, the commander in chief of the apostles of Israel and then Jonathan. Because you see, later King Saul was made to know that Jonathan was not in camp. And then he never followed through, yet he gave an instruction. Because he lacked, he lacked the proficiency, he lacked the quality of communication. Communication leadership is very, very key. And the Lord will help you and I. Because when there's no communication, whatever it is that you should be taking, you should slow down. Whatever logistics that was going to be carried out, if there's no adequate communication, hearing from the leader and to the sub leader, that thing should slow down. And the prayer points for you and I are let us pray to always keep in touch with our fellow leaders or followers. Let us pray to be guided in all we do. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, second green, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls, as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is unprofitable for you. Here is the word of God. It's not the word of God or Pastor Gibbard. It's not the word of God written by strange in any law. It is strange in the Holy Writ. It's strange in the word of God. He put chapter 13, verse 17, and read again, Obey them, they have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, whoever you are. Whoever you are, 
Whoever you are in the social structure, whoever you are, that you are this, you are that, you are a high profile person, whatever you are, whoever you are in your family, your society, your organization, the Bible says, obey them that have a rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your souls and that they must give account when they ask you where are you coming from and where are you going to and what are you planning to do now. They must give an account. If they do not know where you are going to, where you are coming from, and then how can they give account? And now you see, Jonathan never gave his submit himself fully to the father. He went out and sure the father just took it like that. Oh, he's always leaving. Maybe he's not even around. I gave out the instruction. You will submit yourself, obey them that have a rule over you, and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls, because they must give an account. And we don't even understand what they do behind us. We don't even understand the risks they take behind us. We don't even understand the battles they fight behind us. We don't even understand the plan and the thinking and what they go through on our behalf. But we just see them as leaders. And so, well, it's just there to teach us instruction. We don't even understand. Obey them. I have the rule over you and submit yourself. For the watch for your souls. Whether, whether in the church setting, whether in the spiritual setting, whether in the social setting, wherever you are working, wherever it is, or in any organization, obey them that have a rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls and as they must give account, and they, that they do it with joy and not with grief. And that is so profitable for, for you. Imagine the Lord will call and say, Yes, do they are so so and so? I put so so few person on that view because I knew that you were going to lead him to me and make it eventually to heaven. And uh, and you knew everything. I gave you the grace to understand everything about this person and about that. And you gave you the grace. But nobody had the grace, but I gave you the grace. What did you do about it, so Lord? I was afraid. Lord, I didn't want to offend him. I didn't want to offend her. And so I wasn't asking about this. I was just like quiet. And then you know, because I didn't want him or her to feel bad. Oh, oh, look at the crowd now. Look at those that have made heaven now. Is she there? Is she there? No. Because you are afraid or because you didn't want to offend him, you didn't want to offend her, she is lost. He is lost all eternity. He is lost and is lost all eternity. Is that what we want to do? And so sometimes when leaders take the risk and say and plunder the people, uh, this is what I need you to do now because the people, the followers are not, they don't have the far side, they don't have the side. They don't have the foresight. Uh, they don't have maybe the hindsight. They don't have the foresight. The leader sees that, and the Lord gives that kind of commission, comes to the leader's heart and says, This is what you should do. This is what you should do with this person. And, and the person will resist him and will fight him back. And so the leader is not like, Well, if this one will make you get, or get offended, let's leave it like that. The person is, the leader will give report of that person in grief. But when the person is responding, you follow up, you come over here now. This is exactly what I want you to do. And this is what this organization wants you to do. And this is what you should be doing now. And the person follows and obeys swiftly. The person will give report. 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 Enjoy. Imagine your parents will give an instruction to an elderly one and say, okay, tell this other junior person, this other brother of yours and everything. Give report. Monitor and give report. And if that child is very cooperative, when is he or she is giving report to the parents, they will give report in joy. But the child is not cooperative, when it's giving report, they will give report in grief. And the Bible says, this is not profitable for you. Let's start this source to point number two. Navigation of leadership to return to the Almighty God. We navigate. We'll go back. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 41 and verse 42, Therefore Saul said unto the Lord, God of Israel, give a perfect lot, and Saul and Jonathan will take him, for the people escape. And so said, cast blood between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. Now they were navigating. Saul was navigating. Saul needed to search in was to find out what the issue was. Now they cast blood. And they said, the people are free. The followers were free of this crime, of the crime. And then they cast blood. And they knew that the problem was between him and his son. And they cast blood again. And then you'll see later, you'll see that Jonathan was killed. Now, being honest and pleasing the Almighty God, and not blaming it on the others, it's a high quality. It is a quality the Lord wants us to understand. Now, we shall look at leaders and not superhumans. Leaders and not superhumans. Look at that verse again. I'll read again. You need to push 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls 
as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, but that is unprofitable unto you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 18, look at verse 18 now. It says, Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. Look at that verse again. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 18, pray for us. Pray for us. And the spirits of the leaders are asking for prayers. Pray for us. Pray for us that our conscience will be intact. Our conscience will not be sealed. Our conscience will not turn to a stony conscience. Our conscience will not uh, become evil so that we can live honestly, so that we can lead you honestly. It's not enough to castigate your leaders. Anything the leader will say, every instruction that you will give, every instruction that you will every instruction is only fault finding. Oh, they just said it now, fault finding. They just said that now, fault finding. They will so much find fault to themselves to the point that they will start finding fault with themselves. Everything. No, you don't begin to find fault with your leaders. Rather, your duty as a follower is to pray for your leaders continually. You pray for them. You pray, why do you pray for them? So the devil will not manipulate their conscience, manipulate their heart. Because if the devil manipulates their heart, then they will dish out evil instruction. If the devil manipulates the conscience of a good leader, they will start doing something wrong. It is very key. It is not enough to accuse your leader. It is very critical that you pray for your leader so that they will not be manipulated. Imagine the devil manipulates the leader to do the otherwise. And that otherwise is always, you always tell on the follower. But if you keep praying for your leader, the leader will design. He will know what is good for the people. He will think about the people. He will think about their weapon. He will think about their spiritual uh, state. He will think about their blessings. He will think about keeping them, not joining them. But if you do not pray for your leader, the demons will take charge of their heart, take charge of their mouth, take charge of their decision, and that becomes evil. We shall look at becoming a leader or follower of heaven's choice. In John chapter 3, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world told him might be saved. In John chapter 10, verse 9, and the door by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus Christ is the way, he is the one. If you really want to be a good leader, it's not by mechanical processes, it's not by reading just some books and hearing people talk. It is that to be a good leader is to have a good conscience. And for you to have a good conscience, God must have touched your heart, you must have the prepared experience. The Holy Spirit must have touched you. He must have given your life to Christ. And when you give your life to Christ, your heart is touched. Then you have a good conscience. Then you can lead the people aright. Then you can say, the Lord is leading me to help the people. If you do not have Jesus in your, in your heart, and you want to lead the people with what you have in your mental asset, with what you have in your brain, you may lead them astray. That's where Jesus comes in. He said, I am the door. Jesus Christ is the door. By Jesus, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Which means there's no other door. There's no crusader. There's no religious figure or personality that was in the past. There was no, there's, there has never been and there will never be. The only access code to heaven, the only access code to the Almighty God is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the one. No other one. No other one. It is not an angel. It is not uh, it's not it's not Mary Magdalene. It is not Mary the mother of Jesus. It is not any other person. There is no crusader of any religion. It is Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the access code to the Almighty God. And that's why it says in John chapter 10, verse 9. And the door. So if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. In John chapter 3, verse 17, 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you want to be saved today, wherever you are listening to the sound of his words, you must call upon Jesus. Whether you are in the closet, call upon Jesus. Wherever you are, whether you are in the beer parlor, you are in the alcohol parlor, whether you are in the disco hall, if you call upon the name of the, of, of the Lord, you shall be saved. Whether you are in a fraternity meeting or a cultic meeting, wherever you are, if you call upon the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Wherever you are, you are in the bathroom, if you call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Wherever you are, wherever you are, right now listening, you shall be saved. And the prayer points for you, and let us pray for consistency in leadership. And let us pray for the Almighty God to cause His face to shine upon us. So, this is national point number one lead by example for bountiful outcomes. So, this is national point number two get into the middle of resolving issues in your territory where you are leading other people. So, this is national point number three do not stay away from, from any current resolution process in your followership. So, this is national point number four be the first to know of any challenge and call others to iron it out 
be a proactive force, even though you are not the first to know of the common challenge in your delegation of your leadership. So the challenge point, point number five. In as much as your followers are praying for you, also pray for them. It is critical. And the question to you and I is, have you searched in words as a leader to know the source and the solution to any challenge in your territory of leadership? And listen, now, whenever you are as a leader, always be the first to know. But if you are not the first to know, and you don't get to know, take, be the proactive first. Take finding the solution proactively. Get into the know and start the process. And don't say, well, a delegated authority for that issue to be resolved and you stay away as the main leader. No, get involved in the middle of the resolution and the Lord will help you and I. But for you to give our life to Jesus Christ, we need to repent of sins and dead works or dead works and sin. There are so many. The immoral lifestyle, the boyfriend and the girlfriend, and that person you take pleasure from. And you go to the place on a Saturday on the weekend, you take the person out and then you do all kind of evil. The seduction. The twerking of all forms. And they say you should dance, you twerk your body, you move your waist like a snake. And then you want to seduce the people. The twerking of all forms. The online of physical prostitution. The sugar mommy and sugar daddy practice. The masturbation. The pornography. The bestialism. The homosexuality. I don't care the, the bill and the past in your country that homosexuality is in law right now. It is evil and the law kicks against it. The same set marriage, the lost thing. The emotional adultery, can it be that? And you see this kind of emotional adultery, the adultery is there and the sodomy. And then you see the deception, committing adultery with people, living double faced life. The Lord is saying, repent of these things now. The selfishness. Always seeking your ways and desires in life. In life, rather than the ways and desires of the Almighty God, the owner of your life. Always after your own joys and possession, not thinking about other people's. And then the Lord is saying, Repent now. In 4 John 3, verse 15, He says, Whosoever hates his brother is a mantra. And you know that no mantra has eternal life abiding in him. And you always want not to want to forgive. Even when he says, I'm sorry, even when she says, I'm sorry. Ah, you always refer to it the ancient times. Oh, in 90 so so and so, in year 2000 and so so and so, this is exactly what you did. That is exactly what you did. You will bring the past even to, to, to the changed present and you will never want to forgive. You are on the way to a fire and the Lord is saying, Repent. Repent. It is critical to repent. The gossiping and the slandering. You always want to gossip. Gossip everybody and then when you come before the same people, you smile. And when you go right before him or before her, within seconds, you start saying evil about that person. You're on your way to hell, fire, the unforgiveness. And I've said that before, the unforgiveness and the malice keeping, the witchcraft, the demon possession, and the use of spells and charms. And if you're, there's a demon in your life, let me tell you this, the demon did not create your life. It is a devil in your life, you cry out to the Almighty God, the devil will fly away and the revenge. You want to revenge because the person offended you 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. You, you keep it in the crevices of your heart, you lock it up there, waiting for an opportunity to vent up your pent up venom. And then you see the Lord is saying that if you keep that kind of heart, you can't even mutter Jesus to your lips that heaven will even listen to. All your prayers will, will never be answered because you know why? Because you are keeping a venom of hatred, the venom of forgiveness in your heart, approving and supporting those who practice evil. You know the step this person is about to take is evil, but because of fear for the person, and because you are receiving one favor from the person, you will not speak the truth. You will not speak the truth. Don't you know when you do that to other people, when it gets to your tongue, somebody wants to do it to you, speak the truth, irrespective of the favor you are getting from the individual, and is planning evil against somebody else, speak the truth and say that is wrong. And look at the person side of the person you are planning evil against and then correct it. Instead of keeping quiet and say, thank God it is not even me. It will get to your tongue. It will get to your tongue here on earth, even before eternity and judgment. But you see, that should not be the prayer. The prayer that it should never get to any other person's tongue and it will get to your own tongue. Try and make peace with people. Broke up peace with people. Broke up peace so that in your own time too, people will broke up peace with whatever. The parental responsibility. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when it's old, it will not depart from it. Your child is watching evil, watching all those kind of dirty games because you don't want your child to cry. 
and then you let you let the child to continue to watch the evil. When the child grows up to be something else, you start blaming God and blaming all kinds of things, and that is evil. You change and sense from all those evil, and the Lord will help on the drug abuse and peddling. You say, well, this alcohol is just a seed. It's just a tiny seed, and I take it every morning. It charges me up so that I will do my day's uh, activities effectively. That is evil. They are charging you up. You are to drug abuse. Stop it. It is evil before the Lord. Don't let anybody rationalize the scripture and begin to divide the scripture to please the works of darkness or, or to please the works of the devil. Well, stay away from alcoholic beverage, and the Lord will keep you, and the Lord will help you, and the Lord will help every one of us. Not only that, there are so many evil that the Lord wants us to repent from. On and on and on and on. The evil patronage and all the voodoo. You'll say, well, you know, you know, thank God for faith. But I need to put this charm and the voodoo inside my suit or put it inside somewhere. You know, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Repent from all those evil and all those things they did to you. All those evil concussions that the so fortune tellers tell you and say, well, I will now, I want to, I want to eat. I want to dig deep into this matter. Help me right now. And you go to a soothsayer or a fortune teller or whoever, whatever, whatever. And the person uses magical powers and all of that and tells you this and that. You are patronizing the devil. And then that will take you to hellfire. And the Lord will help us. And the one that says that one saved is always saved. It's evil. It's evil. You can imagine you don't step into a school and you enroll into that school in year one of that school. And because you enroll in year one and you say, after five years, you keep being here. One, and he said, I've graduated. He says, I've graduated. Why did you say so? Because I was already old in that school five years ago. But you are still in year one. You never moved out in year two. You say, Well, I was enrolled in that school five years ago. It's not, not mental issues or whatever. That's when enrolled in the school one year ago. You should progress into the second year, into the third year class, into the fourth year class. You should progress. One saved is never saved. For you to maintain your salvation, you will need to do what is right all the time with the help of God in your life. Now you will see the use of Jezebel's property. And this cuts the heart of the Lord Almighty. And this is one habit of the Lord because they are brought in the world into the church. And you come to the church, you see people almost half naked, look like those dirty dressing, and they wear all kinds of evil. They do all kinds of things with all the artificial air, with everything that they do, they bring it into the church. And they will change the music of the church to something else. And they say they are doing rapping. That they are rapping for Jesus. Who told you Jesus is interested in what they're rapping? Who told you that Jesus Christ is interested in demonic originated rapping? Who told you that? He said, I'm using my gift to serve Jesus. Now you know what? I was in the world before. Now I'm rapping. I'm doing Christian rapping. Christian rapping will take you to hell fire. But straight, the Lord will not meddle himself or anything as such with the people of the world and all of those things that they do, and the Lord will help us. And so we come very shamelessly, we come to the church like this, almost half naked, and see they are doing rap with tattoos all over their body. The Lord will help every one of us, and the Lord will touch us, that we will stay away from all the Jezebel-like kind of life, and the work-based system, and will not bring any work into the church. And you, you know, then you begin to wonder. Before the pastor will preach, and then you see the rapper will come like this, you know, sometimes before the pastor preaches, you'll see, you'll see hymns and songs that can stir up your soul and that can bestir your interest and motivation for the Lord and the love for eternity in heaven. And when you see the rapper will come, will stir up the people's flesh and the people will start dancing left and right. And the demons will be looking at them, laughing at the people and say, well, this is what they have sold to the church. And they will say, and then we'll see the people will applaud the people of the world and then in the church. And because they just rapped and rapped, nonsense and wrap all kind of evil, wrap demonic and was into the lives of the people. Instead of them being more godly, they become more righteous. Instead of them more careful, they become evil. And they rap, finish rapping the church, they go into morality. They become rapping the church, they go into morality. After rapping, rapping the church, they go into morality. They go into their stealing. They go into their crimes. They go into all kind of womanizing. They go into the new life dressing. They become more injured to the world after all the rapping. And the Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. The Lord will help the church. In Jesus' name, wherever you are right now, if the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Jesus Christ is the door, and you want to accept the access code, and you want to know Jesus, so you can accept the Almighty God, wherever you are right now, you will say after me, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. And I promise you, I will not go back to evil anymore. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. 
I will not go back to evil anymore. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer sincerely, congratulations. Father, in Jesus' name, we we'll pray, O oh Lord, that you touch the people. Every individual that has prayed that prayer sincerely, write it to our name in the book of life and the power of sonship. And that the Spirit of God witness within them and the children of God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the salvation of the people is key unto you. Lord, I pray that anything that will hinder that kind of prayer will cancel in Jesus' name. For now, it's thought they are activated unto righteousness, to righteous living, unto the holiness that you have prescribed unto us in your scriptures. I pray that they will go on from here to live righteously for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lord, I pray. Leadership in the churches, leadership across the world, that you will do their personal cleansing and their homework before ministry unto the people. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.